And on to privacy. Uh, of course, you all know what privacy is. No, you don't. Go ahead. Try to come up with a definition of privacy. I'll wait. Well, no, I won't, because I know you're not going to be able to do it. Um, it's, it's much more complicated than people think. Um, people tend to think about, uh, you know, they're very concerned about their own personal privacy, but they're not too terribly concerned about other people's privacy. And so it makes it hard to say what is privacy actually, what is it as a, a thing, how do you define it, uh, how do you determine this is a situation that is private, this is not, uh, what are... Uh, things that you want kept private. Uh, and that tends to be subjective, that some people are very concerned about their medical information, some people are very concerned about their financial information, uh, some people are very concerned about their own personal opinions, and other people aren't. You can have any of their opinions, whether you want to or not. So, um, it, it is... You know, it's it's more difficult than it seems initially when you start to actually think about it. You know, what is privacy? What do we determine to be private? What um, is it that we uh, agree should be held private and how private should it be held? Um, I, I think one of the best definitions of privacy, and this is unfortunately not one that uh, really works uh, in terms of creating legislation and, and law about privacy. But um, uh, somebody said that privacy is uh, your ability to control information about yourself. Now, notice there, it doesn't say that you can you know, um, uh, keep everything, all information about you completely out of arm's range. But, you know, the, a, to a certain extent, having the ability to control um, information about yourself, that is, is privacy. Um, unfortunately, that's not reality. Uh, you don't get to see. If you live in a community, uh, you, you don't get to control um, whether or not people see you. People see you as you're walking around, as you're going about your normal business. If you're going to interact with anyone, they, uh, they see you, they hear you, um, you, so you, so you cannot, you know, this control in terms of privacy is never, ever, going to be absolute if you have any relationship with anybody else. And so that is, you know, the, the first problem even with, as I say, what I consider one of the best definitions of privacy. Now there's an, another one. Uh, again, um, this doesn't uh, work in terms of legislation, uh, although it's, it's an interesting... Uh, uh, way to look at the possibility, but um, David Brin, uh, an author, uh, more widely known, I suspect, for um, uh, his science fiction works, um, uh, he has written a book called The Transparent Society, and he starts on the basis of, um, uh, I think it was Scott McNeely's uh, no, or no, maybe it was Larry Ellison. Uh, anyway, uh, the statement, rather famous statement, even if I forget who said it, uh, that you have zero privacy anyway, get over it. Uh, because, of course, in our modern society, with our modern technologies, the, uh, you know, access to information is much easier. And so, 
the ability to prevent people from getting access to information about you is is going to be a, a lot more difficult. So, you know, the statement, you have no privacy. Um, and, and the follow-on statement, get over it. Now, David Brin looks at the first part of that and says, okay, uh, yes, the technology does seem to be sending us in that direction. What, then, can we do about it? Um, what... You know, how should we think about privacy in view of this situation? And uh, he came up with the concept of reciprocal transparency, saying, if you want information about me, I should be able to get information about you. And it's a really, really interesting uh uh, book and and a really interesting proposition in terms of thinking about privacy and and what really is privacy, what we should do about privacy, how we should pursue it. Um, taking this idea of no, you know, we, we control everything. You know, we we control the information about ourselves and won't let anybody know. Uh, what we are doing, or, or anything about ourselves, and saying, okay, uh, other people can get information about us fairly easily, what then should we do about that? And the idea of reciprocal transparency is, you uh, want information about me, I get information about you. Um, I, I highly recommend the book. Um, it's something to... Uh, really stretch your mind about what privacy actually is. Um, I'm not going to go through it in detail, but there's just one area that I, I think is illustrative of how important this can be. And that is um, where he talks about uh, basically intellectual property, which we've just been talking about, and says, okay, um, in a transparent society, you should be able to use any published material. Um, so, if I write something and you want to use it, you should be able to use it. But the concept of reciprocal transparency then means that the fact that you have used my material is also transparent, is also evident, is also available. And so, um, while yes, uh, my ability to control your use and say that you have to pay me um, f- uh, some kind of licensing fee because you have used my work. Um, that could be difficult, but the fact that you have used my work and have not acknowledged it or paid a fee or licensed it is also obvious and available. So, uh, Interesting stuff. And, um, <coughs> like I say, not something uh, that we can build laws on, but something to think about as we go forward with other aspects and the particularly legal aspects of privacy.